Me and my wife are separated but she continues to try and get back together. What can I do? Me and my soon-to-be ex-wife are separated and agreed to divorce. We have been separated and living separately for almost three weeks. We are divorcing because she apparently doesn't feel love for me anymore and thinks I'm aging terribly. I found out she has been texting a guy she met but swears up and down, she has gone any further than that. We agreed to keep it civil and help each other when we need help. I was okay with that until a few days ago when I realized that she's just using me and being toxic. I haven't called or texted her in days. I usually call or she calls me to see if I need something, at least once per day. She called me yesterday and asked if she could come to our house. I said sure and we had a long conversation. To make a long story short, she wants to end the separation and get back together. She claims that she misses me and the time away from me has opened her eyes to what a man I am. I declined and told her no and she cried and I asked her to leave. She's been calling and texting me but I already made up my mind. Can I say anything to her or do anything to make her leave me alone completely? I don't want her in my life anymore. Us separating made me realize I no longer want anything to do with you. From this point on please do not contact me unless necessary for legal reasons. Then stick to that. Only reply or reach out for legal reasons. Things with the other guy she was messing with probably weren't what she initially thought they were. And you're probably the security blanket option not the option she truly wants. What's to stop her from not feeling you in the future like she has already? That's not fair to you sad face. I'd only speak to her about divorce related things, and only through text, email so there is a paper trail. Ignore everything else. We agreed to divorce, and I am not open to a reconciliation I do not want to discuss it further. Please direct all communication to my lawyer. Keep it all in writing, email, text. Don't respond if she text bombs you or blows up your phone. File the divorce paperwork and if she keeps coming around, get a restraining order. That's how you can avoid these scenes and move forward. Text her that you will only communicate with her via text, email and only about the divorce. File for divorce, divorce, then block her from everything. Took me nearly two years to get my ex-wife to finally leave me alone as it took two years to divorce, serious MH issues on her side and grass is greener syndrome. I learned the grey rock technique and literally bored the shit out of her when she would get in touch, turn up, usually turning up behind our kid, hijacking FaceTime when she came to stay with me so I couldn't cause a scene. I truly became so dull around her that she wanted to be anywhere else. She told you she thinks you're aging terribly? Yeah best stick to the divorce. You are plan B and her plan A didn't work out. My girlfriend is going to cheat on me. My girlfriend is planning to cheat on me with her boss, I saw her text messages. She's going to meet him outside work somewhere. We have been together for 5 years, we have a kid. I'm freaking out internally, I don't know what to do. Should I confront her? Should I wait and watch from a distance? She didn't find out that I know about it, and I'm acting completely normal, she's sitting now near to me writing him. I never thought she would do such a thing, I'm shocked. We're a family and as partners we have a healthy relationship. I live and work in Germany. I have no friends here, I feel alone and completely paralyzed. I can't believe what's happening, I feel like I'm living a nightmare. No time like the present to let her know you know. She has shattered her relationship. This isn't something that you did or didn't do. Your girlfriend is just a shitty partner. I'm sorry you found out. She needs to know that you know. If you haven't already, get proof such that she cannot try to lie her way out of it. Time to look out for yourself and your kid. I'm sure plenty of other people will give you more specific advice on what to do. I will just tell you what not to do. Don't use the fact that you're isolated in Germany as an excuse to stay with her. That's what you're doing toward the end of your post there. Being cheated on sucks. But it's not a rare thing. Just accept that she is willing to throw you and your child away for some sex. Doesn't matter if you confront her about this guy or the next guy. This isn't someone you want to be with. I would ask her if she has something to tell you and if she says no then confront her. For me personally even the intention to cheat is the exact same as having done it and I would leave. You deserve a lot better. Confront her for sure. Have proof and don't get gaslit. Good luck, this won't be easy, but it could be worth it. Whatever the outcome you will, survive. Find out if her boss has a wife, partner and forward the convo to them. Your girlfriend would find out how guys rarely leave their wife for a fling. After that dump her and redirect your focus on co-parenting with boundaries. Don't let your living situation make you accept her disrespect. 
You can always make friends and meet new people, especially when you're single winking face. P's you're lucky you found out now before she could pass something on to you from her cheating. I would tell her our. Let them know that her boss is being inappropriate with her and that you're concerned about him taking advantage of his workers. The leave her. Before you go to their HR department, I suggest talking to a German lawyer. What constitutes proof under our standards may not be proof under their law and customs. I also suggest taking video of the two of them meeting if you can. And be ready to take your daughter and hit the trail home if necessary. The lawyer should be able to advise you about your status as a foreign national in Germany. Make an excuse and screenshot the texts before you confront her. Update. I followed the advice from a fellow Redditor and reached out to the person I ghosted. You can see my past post about this. I was talking with someone on here who was going through the exact same thing. After this girl I broke things off with and blocked kept reaching out to me. I could see her txt msgs through the blocked messages folder. I started to feel guilty about how I hurt her. She then called me drunk and needing help so I helped her. This Reddit user recommended I actually explain to her why I broke things off. Which was I was not over my ex, not ready for a relationship and I felt like she wasn't healed from her prior relationship either. She was dealing with some trauma and often coming to me to help soothe her and comfort her when she needed which I told her I didn't mind. She suffered from sever anxiety, but it was starting to affect my mental health as well. I decided to call her, I chose not to do this in person, at first she reacted poorly, she was crying very upset but the more she listened she understood what I was saying. I told her it had nothing to do with her and more so that we both needed to heal on our own. She needed to seek therapy and heal from her past trauma and she couldn't do that by just depending on me. She actually took it well by the end. She said she appreciated me talking to her and telling her the reason. She said she is still upset bcz she misses me but agreed she depended on me too much and she needed to find herself first. She did ask me if after a couple months if I could reach out. I told her I would but if I sensed she wasn't completely healed I would back off again and go no contact. She agreed with that. I told her I will keep her blocked for both of our sakes so we are not tempted to reach out. I feel so much better and as much as I hurt her by being painfully honest about why I was ending things, she took it better than I thought and she respected me for respecting her. So for anyone debating whether they should reach out to someone they ghosted or blocked to explain why, just do it. It actually made me respect her more too. Before I just felt like a coward pretending to be a hero telling myself it was better for her when really I was just too afraid to actually explain myself to her. I am glad I followed the advice to do so. If we are meant to be in each other's life we will be. That can't have been easy, but you did the right thing. Good job op. Both you and her are going to be doing a lot better because of your compassion. Don't contact her in a couple of months. No one heals from trauma that fast. Honestly, just move on. Trauma can take a long time to heal from. Yup. People are often stronger and more reasonable than we give them credit for. Unless they don't like you. Then everything you say is twisted in their minds. I'm impressed you did this. I don't think people have enough empathy to do it. I'm glad you did. You done the right thing. Hope that whatever happens you both get better. She took it better than I thought and she respected me for respecting her. Way to go, op. Props to you. It's hard to have these conversations but you both proved that you're worth the effort. Really nice work. Being able to give another person the respect that you did is impressive. Good on you. You did something I wish I could do and that is definitely not easy. Respect to both of you and I wish both of you the best in the future. How am I, 30F, a home wrecker? Throw away account for obvious reasons. My grandma passed away in September and she lived between my mom and her two other sisters. They'd alternate each month. About six, seven years ago my mom's sister, widow, started dating a guy. We'll call him Tim. Tim has two kids. A daughter and a son. Shortly after Tim and my aunt started dating, my grandma met his son. We'll call him Taylor. My grandma and aunt both really pushed for Taylor and I to meet but at the time I was dating someone else. We actually broke up during the pandemic, April 2020. I met Taylor for the first time at my grandma's funeral. We clicked right away and he gave me his number. It started off pretty innocent with mainly grandma stories then a few weeks and it was, remember when grandma and aunt wanted to set us up, then we were texting, calling each other every day. A few days before Halloween we went on our first date. We hooked up that night. We started spending a lot of time together then last week. My aunt calls me telling me I'm a home wrecker. 
I have no clue what she is talking talking about. I find out Taylor has a fiancé, since last Christmas and they just bought a home together near me a month ago. I'm obviously furious at Taylor, but my aunt and her boyfriend literally are only blaming me. How is this solely my fault? His, ex, fiancé is also only blaming me because I, seduced, him, which she has made public on her Facebook page. I truly had no idea or I would not have gotten involved with him. He told me he broke up with his girlfriend during the pandemic. I assumed it was truthful because it happened to me and a few others I know. He also has no trace of her on his IG page. I'm truly dumbfounded how he is taking no responsibility. Too long did not read. Guy lied about having a fiancé and somehow it's my fault. And hash x200b. Update. I'm so sorry if I wasn't clear in the original post. I was angry and tired while writing it and noticed quite a few comments asking why my aunt tried to set me up with Taylor if he was engaged or why she tried to set me up with someone I grew up with as a cousin. So my aunt started dating Taylor's dad like 7 years ago. So Taylor and I would have been 23. Both fully developed adults. Never crossed paths before that. Lived in two totally different areas. I did not actually met Taylor until September of 2021 when my grandma died. We were both 30 at the time. He is now 31. When my grandma and my aunt tried to set us up, we were both maybe 24 25ths ish. It was about six months or a year after Tim and my aunt started dating. I never spent any holidays with Tim or his family. He spends the holidays with his kids, parents, siblings, etc. My aunt had worked probably three quarters out of the last few Christmas, healthcare, and when she's not working, sometimes she will spend it with my family and my dad's extended. Sometimes she will spend it with Tim and his. It depends. Even though, though my mom and her siblings, split custody, of my grandma before her passing, they all live very busy lives, have careers, families, etc. So they would drop off, pick up chat for a bit and be on their way. Text weekly, etc. I also saw comments my mom was a poss. She did defend me and told my aunt what I had told her. She believes me 100%. Also the reason I didn't mention anything to my aunt is because we honestly aren't the close. Yes, she tried to set me up, but I was close with my grandma and now that she's gone we barely talk. I'll shot her a text here and there and see what she's up to for holidays, but besides that we don't converse much and I wasn't really sure where things were going because he was the first person I, dated, since my long-term ex. Not your fault. Move on from it. Turn the page and live your life. You're not a home wrecker. Your moron aunt and moron uncle is looking for someone other than the actual person at fault to blame. If he has a fiancé he shouldn't be going around asking people's phone numbers or going on dates. Don't even bother with the fiancé. They'll do anything but hold their cheating partner accountable. Apparently he is an asshole. Reach out to his fiancé and tell her that his version of the story to her is quite different from the truth. Just as his story to you was very different from the truth as well. You can let her know that now that you are aware of this relationship you are no longer interested in him whatsoever. No you are not a homewrecker. Only the cheat is responsible for his, her actions. Ignore your family's nonsense. Cut them off if necessary for self-care. I have a question, can an American answer me please? What is this thing with blasting people on social media that you guys have? I heard the same pattern in different scenarios, cheating, wedding problems, family problems, you name it. Like. Can't you not tell the world everything? What is the need for that? It's the most embarrassing thing. You're not to blame. But I hope you are done with him. Blaming the third person who was unaware of the engagement is easier than taking personal responsibility. It's also always easier to blame the women. What did you wear to seduce him? Probably something sexy like a burqa, s. His, ex. Fiance is also only blaming me because I, seduced, him, which she has made public on her Facebook page. I'm tempted to say you should threaten legal action but I imagine it will be more hassle than it's worth. If the harassment continues, it's an option you should consider. People who cheat like this don't have any problem absolving themselves of blame so I'm not surprised at this actions. Your uncle and aunt though? Terrible people. Block them. And tell them you won't consider contact until they apologize for their behavior.